So yeah, then there's like the little plot development like that. It's like, oh my god, this new guy, he may not be uh, all that great. Now, I, I think I remember in the first season, I, now, I haven't gone through this DVD set. I just got it in the mail because it was a, it was a birthday present from Elfie's. You know, and my DVD players have been working right. So actually, we had to rip this to my hard drive to, to watch it. But, um, basically, um, I think there was another episode in the first season where they had to deal with a traitor or something like that. Um, but that was, that was one of the things that, um, kind of made me really like this show so much was, you know, it, it was a war. And they didn't do anything to try to hide it. It's like, you know, these guys are kind of struggling for survival against, you know, this tyranny. And, um, there's some harsh realities in it. Like, every once in a while, you know, they're, they're, there's characters that get captured. And, um, the big thing is that characters get roboticized in this. You know, basically it's the equivalent of, like, you know, when you jumped on, in a video game, we jumped on a robot and a little animal would bounce away. Kind of the same idea, except they actually put a, a plot device behind it. And, uh, every once in a while they would actually talk about the deaths of a few characters. And, uh, it kind it kind of was rough at times, you know, and everybody's like, oh, I don't know. That's I, the thing, though. Sonic like, into something like that, but that's what made it cool, you know? That's what made it different. That's the thing, though. Like, a lot of 90s kids shows really did have, like, some dark themes to them, but then it wasn't really, like, displayed all that completely that it was dark. Whereas, like, a lot of kids shows nowadays are dark, and it will, like, stay dark. Like, like, well, like, like, like Yu-Gi-Oh now. Yu-Gi-Oh? Like, I don't... It, like... There's I like don't dark know. I, I can't and comment because I really don't watch Yu-Gi-Oh too much. That's one. That's like one of the most recent ones that draws to mind because I don't really watch too much. I, like, I was kid about shows to say now. I can't remember any time where you know like uh, Pokemon was talking about like oh my god this character died now I'm all depressed. <laughs> well, there was like I think some evil things going on in Pokemon. Like, I can't. I, I honestly like, I there was always I, like, like the uh, well, I think leader kids- Team Rocket like taking the Pokemon and then like torturing them and like using them for their like personal like. Tools and stuff. Yeah, well, that's that wasn't Ash doing the same thing. I mean, like when it was, it but like in a good it, sense. You know, it's all animal abuse. <laughs> a bit, except they actually like treat him well and like feed him and stuff. These guys were just like taking him and like doing evil things with him. Yeah. But um, yeah. So this is like like there was there were three versions of Sonic in the nineties. There was this. There was the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, and then there was Sonic Underground, which aired on Sci-Fi, which was really bad. It was really, really bad. Like, like it, 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 Sonic had a brother and a sister in it, and they were like destined heroes or something like that. And every in every episode, they would sing a song. Ugh. Yeah, but all of them were voiced by Jalal White. You know, Urkel. I think they were like kept them in the same thing that. It, like would cause that to appeal to people to want to watch it since he is still doing the voice. Yeah, he unfortunately he didn't do it for Sonic X. I you know it would have been cool if he did, but um, it, I guess either he turned it down or they didn't come up to him or anything like that. He didn't do the voice for Sonic in uh, Sonic in, um, Adventure. Um, yeah, Sonic Adventure. I was kind of disappointed in that, but I I, I knew that was going to happen because that's kind of common. Um. Now, here, here's something that I want to point out here that even got me when I was a kid. Um, but wasn't that door, like, electrified or something? Like, Sonic couldn't touch it? Or maybe and it's now like, she just, like, slammed face first into it? Probably had, like, an anti-Sonic barrier or something like, weird like that. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's Sally's little personal computer, which, um... Like kind of helps her out, like with various things, you know. It's like it's like it's kind of like you know the back computer, like it it could do anything except it fits in the palm of her hand. So it's kind of like you know, like it, it's con- it's twenty years ahead of the back computer, whereas the back computer is like this huge fucking thing and takes up like a whole the whole back cave. Her computer does everything except it's like iPod size. So. Um, then again, they come from like another planet and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. So I, I guess I can't hold stuff. that against Batman, but um. That, uh, I remember that I think in this season there was a plot development later on where um, Sonic actually got a hold of the computer for a little while, and it was like and it, and it was like getting annoyed with it and then taught it how to have a personality. So then like any time later on after that, when the computer would talk to Sonic and be like, "Yo, Sonic, my main man, what's up?" <laughs> but 
Now, now this this was kind of rare because this didn't really happen too much. This little like cartoony, um, like almost kind of 007 attempt of killing somebody, like the the diabolical death trap, where you just kind of you're not really there. We when, when you have you have the the victim right there in your clutches, you could do the Seth Green thing. Like like look, I in my room I got a gun. We can just shoot this guy right now. And it's like no, I'd rather just let the sharks do it. <laughs> you know, 